السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا والسيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يتلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله Dear brother and sister, Alhamdulillah Now we are still talking about or discussing about the basic foundation of our deen. Now we have been discussing about the importance of knowing the two shahada. Having the right knowledge, right understanding, right yaqeen about kalima shahada. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah. Then now we are focusing again to the second pillar of Islam about our communication with Allah. Yeah, our direct communication with Allah, the Salawatul Khamsa. What I've been reminding myself and to all the students of knowledge and also to all the Muslims, which I am exposed to, that it's important to have a good communication with Allah. Now, if once you have a good communication with Allah, you are sure to have a good communication with all the people, inshallah with yourself, with your family, with your sibling, with your wife, with your children, inshallah. But the most important thing now is to have a good communication with Allah through a salah Now we have discussed about it's important to have knowledge about salah When I say knowledge, it's not according to what you like to say, what you like to do, but you have the knowledge of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, the Sunnah how he performed his salah and how should we follow him to perform our salah. Today, a billion of Muslims is making salah, alhamdulillah. But if you ask majority of them, how do you perform your salah? Who do you follow? Majority of them are saying, I follow my forefather, I follow majority, I follow this, some imam, you know. But did the Prophet Wasallam said you should follow anybody when Salah is concerned. No. He make it very clear by saying, Sallu amara aytumuni usalli. Form your prayer. Any prayer, far or sunnah, you form your prayer like how we seen our Prophet perform it. Alhamdulillah, through the Sahih Hadith, then you will come to know how our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam performed his prayer. Now, why I emphasize the importance to have the right knowledge? Because we want our salah to be accepted, not the salah that will be rejected. Now, there are salah that Allah do not accept. And that's why Allah even warned the people who perform their salah. Wa'ilu lil musallid. People who perform their salah, but they do not know what they are doing. Allah said, hellfire for them. But he says, brother and sister, Maybe some people who are very new, very naive in their iman, very weak in their iman, suddenly they exposed to this is ayah. Fawailu lil musalli. Hellfire for people who salah. They may stop salah, is it? Even salah, you go to hell. But what kind of salah that we should perform that that salah will be accepted by Allah and will allow us to enter paradise. Yes. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah have mentioned, Qad aflaha al-mu'minun. Allah said, Qad aflaha al-mu'minun. Success are the people who believe. You can be very successful in dunya, but if you do not believe in Allah, to Allah, you are not successful. You are all a loser. Allah put a condition 
a man or a woman who want to be successful in the sight of Allah, the first condition, he must have the right iman. He or she must have the right the iman. If you have all the wealth, all the knowledge, all the power in this world, but you disbelieve Allah, you disobey Allah, you are not a successful person. Qad aflah al mu'minun. And who is a mu'min, a believer, allazina hum fi salatihim khashon. A person who perform his prayer with khusha. You see, iman always follow with amal. It's not just you no know, lip service. I, I have iman, inshallah, I have a strong iman. When I come to salah, on and off. More off than on. Cannot be. If you claim that you have strong iman inside, now outside will be proven that you are performing the salah properly with knowledge, with kushok. Now when you have kushok in the prayer, how can you have kushok? Number one, only with the right knowledge. By following the sunnah, the prophet, without following the sunnah, there's no kushok. You can only feel something. Oh, I have kushok. No, I'm very focused. This is just feeling. The real kushok only come in after you have the right knowledge to follow the prophet way of prayer. How to perform it, what to recite, the movement. The movement in the sauna is like alignment. When the car alignment, wheel alignment is good, mashallah, you drive the car with confidence. You know that the car will move straight, inshallah, because the alignment is good. Everything there is an alignment, even when you build a house, they must have alignment. Whatever we do, we need to have alignment. There is the action. The recitation, so it's very important. Certain recitation, if you don't do it, then you invalid your prayer. Just like Surah Al Fatiha, a person who performs prayer alone and he don't recite Fatiha. He just skip Fatiha. No prayer for him. But he say, I'm still praying. Two rakat, yes. Fajr, two rakat, but you don't recite Fatiha. Allah didn't give you the right to choose anything you want to recite. And then he commands you to follow his messenger. And the Rasulullah have said, La salah liman la fatiha lahu. When you're praying alone, yeah, remember, there's a lot of knowledge about Fatiha that we have to learn, inshallah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us some sign of person who is a true believer, who act upon his belief and perform his salah, and perform the salah with knowledge and khushu. And what is the sign? There's still sign, but it didn't stop there. If you want to know whether your salah is being performed correctly with the right knowledge and understanding or not, then you look at the ayah after this. A person who performs the salah in the right manner, the salah will transform him or her to become a better person that after salah, he or she is not going to talk nonsense anymore. He or she always stay away from any laghuya, anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah also have said, Inna salata tanhaani fahsha wal munka. Salat that is performed with the right intention, right knowledge, right way, is going to give you a kind of power that can protect you from anything that is bad and anything that is haram. Salat have power. But if there's a salat, you don't feel the difference in the same person before salat, and after salah, that means something is wrong with the salah. And a person who performs the salah properly, he inshallah or she become more kind to other people. He likes to help the poor. He will give zakat. He's not stingy anymore. He's not calculative anymore. He will make sure and she also will make sure that when the time for him or her to pay zakat, he is going to pay his and her zakat, not only to pay zakat to help the poor and the needy, but he or she will personally make sure that the zakat money is being given to the right group of people. Now, I believe that all of us, alhamdulillah, who have been a good practicing Muslim, have been paying our zakat. But do we make sure that the zakat is being distributed accordingly? This is another thing that we have to look into it seriously. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِي فُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِزُونَ A person who have iman and perform the salat with khushu, 
This is the quality. He don't talk nonsense anymore outside solar. He's not stingy. He always pays zakat, yeah, sadaqah, and also he always protect himself or herself from anything that is haram, especially relationship with the opposite sex, no zina, and also we don't get involved with male and male or female and female. We only get involved what is allowed, what is halal for us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also remind us that those who perform the prayer properly, he become people of amana. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَأَحْدِهِمْ رَاءٌ A person who have right iman, right salah with kushok, then he will become a person who you can trust. Whatever he say, whatever thing that you entrust him, don't worry. You have the peace of mind. And also, when he make promise, you don't have to worry. He or she is sure to fulfill his and her promise. Because he believes in Allah, he's not going to cheat you. He's not going to lie to you. He's not going to betray you. And if he has been performing salah, mashallah, the salah will transform him and her to be a good person. And when you have all these good qualities that show that you understand what is iman and you understand what is kushok in salah. And Allah said, Ula'ika humul warithud. They are the inheritors. What do we inherit? After you have iman, the right shahada, and follow up with salah, with kushok, you are going to be an inheritor. What do we inherit? Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, brother and sister. Now, who are the inheritors? And what do we inherit? The inheritor, number one, of course, he must be a believer, have the right iman, al iman al sadiq iman that is not being corrupted with kufr and shirk. Yeah, iman al sadiq And who also perform the salah with kushok. Now, any person who makes salah or who establish his salah with bid'ah, they cannot have kushok. But shaitan will give you the feeling, wow, you are kushok? No, no. Kushok only comes from the right knowledge and the sincere intention in following Prophet Muhammad Because the Prophet forbid us to do any kind of innovation in the ibadah. So we must make sure that we do not do any bid'ah in our salah, in a form of action and in the form of recitation. And also our niyat is very important in our salah. You know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even remind our Prophet, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشْرٌ مِسْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِإِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Now Allah is telling us through our Prophet Wasallam, O Muhammad, Say to them that you are human like them, like us. The different you receive the wahyu from Allah, and the, the wahyu is to remind all of us that there's only one true God, and His name is Allah, Rabbul Alamin. And don't commit shirik with Allah. Whoever have the hope and intention to meet Allah, and Allah is happy with us, make sure that you, for the yakmal, amalan saliha. Make sure that you engage in the righteous deed. Not just deed, but righteous deed. That follow the sunnah of the Prophet Any deeds that do not follow the Prophet way will not be considered as amalan saleh, but amalan taleh, the opposite. And the amal saleh, even you are following the sunnah, you must make sure your intention is also correct. Wala yushrik bi ibadati rabbihi ahada. And don't ever commit any form of shirik when you are doing the act of ibadah to Allah. Now, can we commit shirik in worshipping Allah? You are not worshipping idols, human images, animals, Satan. You are worshipping Allah. That's why the Muslims, when they worship Allah, there's no images in front of them. They don't put dollars and cents. They don't put gold and silver in front of them. They don't put a picture of anybody, no. Iyakana Buddha wa Iyakana Stein. 
Can we commit shirk while making ibadah? And Allah said, "Wala yushrik bi ibadati rabbihi ahada." While you are performing the act of ibadah, don't ever commit shirk. Now, what do you understand by this ayah? What is shirk in this ayah, brother and sister? This is shirk bin niyat, meaning you are doing the right thing, you are worshiping Allah, but in the same time, your intention, what is in your heart, is not for Allah. It's for the people to show your friend, to show your future in law, maybe. To show your boss, only when you're working, you always say, I want to go and pray. But when holiday, you don't even pray. You thought that when holiday comes, prayer also, there's a holiday. No, 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 no. You worship Allah until you die. And this is very important. So if you have the right iman, you perform the salat in the right manner, then you become the inheritor. The inheritor of what? You're going to inherit أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ الَّذِينَ يَرِسْتُونَ فَرْدَوْسَ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Allahu Akbar. See what Allah promised us at the end of the day? If you have the right aqidah, right shahadatain, you have said that you do for the sake of Allah, la ilaha illallah, and the way you want to do it, also Muhammad Rasulullah followed the way of the Prophet, and you act accordingly to what you claim, what you declare, not otherwise, at the end of the day, Allah promised all of us that we are going to inherit paradise. That means we are going to enter paradise. Allah loves us so much that He wants us to go to paradise and not just any paradise because there are 100 classes in paradise and the paradise that we are going to inherit, the paradise that we are going to be invited by Allah to enter is Paradise Ferodaus al A'la. The highest level, the highest class. It's like when you're taking a flight, wherever you go, you have economy, flight, business class, and first class. And this is the first class paradise. This is where all the anbiya will be there, inshallah. The little that we do for the sake of Allah with the right intention and follow the sunnah, Allah will reward us so kindly, mashallah. Can you imagine that, brother and sister? But make sure you have the right understanding. Now, there are so many things to learn about Salah. We may not have enough time to share with you every single thing about Salah. But this is just the basic. The rest, of course, you have to follow up. Inshallah. And may Allah make it easy for all of us. Now, there are Salah by yourself. If you're making the Salah alone, there are rules and regulations that you must know. And there is also when you are going to perform salat in jama'ah. Now when you perform salat jama'ah, the rule and regulation have changed. And you must know. The do and don't. There's also something that Allah wants you to do in the salat as an individual. And also the don't. When you perform the salat by yourself individually. Then you have the second part, salat jama'ah. When salat jama'ah now, there are also do and don't. Now you must understand whether when you're making Salat Jama'ah, you have to do the same thing that like we are doing in Salat al In Friday, when you perform the Salat by yourself, alone, of course there are some changes. There are some differences. But you must have the knowledge. If not, then you will generalize everything. You confuse everybody. You confuse your own self. And you may even confuse your children because you do know what you are doing now, and now you are going to pass the same kind of knowledge, information to your children or to your friend who just become a Muslim, then you're going to confuse them again. And what else that you must know? The Adab Jama'ah, how to perform the Jama'ah, to follow the Imam. There is about Salat Jama'ah, about the Saf, like the Prophet said, Inna maju ilal Imam, li فَإِذَا قَبَّرَ فَقَبِّرُ وَلَا تُقَبِّرُ حَتَّى يُقَبِّرُ وَإِذَا رَقَعَ فَرْقَعُ وَلَا تَرْقَعُ حَتَّى يَرْقَعُ وَإِذَا قَالَ إِمَامْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَهُ فَقُولُوا رَبَّنَا لَكَ الْحَمْدُ وَإِذَا سَجَدَ فَاسْجُدُوا وَلَا تَسْجُدُوا حَتَّى يَسْجُدُ إلى الآخر الحديث Very authentic hadith the Prophet said When you are following the Imam The Imam is made for you to follow. You are not supposed to move together or before 
or ahead of the Imam. You must follow. You wait until the Imam have completed his movement, his recitation, then only you follow the Imam. When the Imam says Allah, you also say Allah. Wait until he finished Allahu Akbar. Then you say Allahu Akbar. When the Imam going down for ruku, you cannot just move together the Imam. You must make sure the Imam have completed his movement of ruku. How can you know you cannot look at the Imam when you are making your salah? You must be focused on where you put your forehead, sujud, makana sujud. But you must have the knowledge. Imam also must have the knowledge. It's important. When the Imam has no knowledge, then you create a lot of problems to the ma'amun, to the followers. There's a lot of things that we have to learn. To be an Imam, what is the role of an Imam? You must have the right knowledge of salah. Then you can lead the ma'amun easily, inshallah. Now, when we're talking about Salat al-Jama'ah, Salat Jama'ah have his own do and don't that we must learn, we must have the knowledge if we want to perform Salat Jama'ah and to qualify ourselves to receive the 27 reward. You know that when you perform a Salat in Jama'ah congregation, you have 27 times extra, inshallah, if you do it correctly. But if you don't follow the rule and regulation, then your prayer is void and invalid. Meaning you must perform your prayer by yourself again. How can follow the become imam? No. Imam is a imam. The follow the ma'mum is a ma'mum. You have to have patience. Sabah when you follow the imam. Now you go to the masbu. If the late comer, how do you join in the prayer? If you miss one rakat, two rakat, three rakat, so how do you complete your prayer after that? And also, you have prayer, yeah, what the Imam is praying, sitting, what's going to happen to you? If the Imam can't stand, or when you are traveling, how do you perform your prayer as a Musafir? Now, all these have a lot of things that we have to learn. But inshallah, brothers and sisters, if we are serious about our deen, if we can, you know, focus on this foundation and do it properly, Masha'Allah. Number one, our communication with Allah will be so good. And Allah will give us all the good feeling. And inshallah, we can be a good example to other people because we know what we are doing. We know what we are saying about our deen. So don't take the foundation of Islam lightly. Don't take our prayer lightly. Don't take the shahada lightly. Do it with knowledge, yakin, certainty, with truthfulness, a class, and also do it with mahabba, with love, enqiyat, physical, spiritually, you are involved, and inshallah, Allah will accept whatever we said what and whatever we do. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.